Hello, eTruth subscribers. This is Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute and host of the Daily Bible Answer Man broadcast. I want to talk to you today about the Cambrian explosion. Why? Because the Cambrian explosion is biology's version of the Big Bang. Just as cosmology's Big Bang undid the notion of an eternal universe, which is now absolutely bankrupt in scientific circles, so biology's Big Bang uprooted Darwin's tree of life. Think about it this way. If you took all of geological history and you compressed it into a 24-hour clock, all of the complex body plans that are extant today would appear suddenly in a two-minute time frame during the 21st hour. And this abrupt simultaneous appearance of complex body plans signals a vast infusion of information that can only be attributed, well, to an intelligent designer. So what we have here is a difference between what Darwin theorized in reality. Darwin theorized that there would be hundreds thousands, really millions of transitional forms leading up to the Cambrian radiation. In actuality, none appear. Here's what Darwin actually said. The distinctiveness of specific forms and their not being blended together by innumerable transitional links is a very obvious difficulty. And the difficulty has only gotten worse. At Darwin's time there were not the millions or multiplied millions of transitional forms that he expected and nor are there today and the fossil record is replete today with fossils. In other words we now have a lot of what Darwin didn't have in his day and again the problem's only gotten worse over time. The fossil record has greatly expanded and yet all known animal body plans appear in the form they possess today. I wanted to quote Rudolf Rolf, who is a distinguished evolutionary biologist, saying this, all of the known animal body plans seem to have appeared in the Cambrian radiation. Darwin's candor is to be commended, he said, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed that could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. And that, of course, is precisely what has happened. So the bottom line is this. The fossil record absolutely says no to Darwin's theory of evolution. And as a Christian, you ought to be able to make that point. To use the fossil record as an opportunity to point out that evolution is no longer tenable in an age of scientific enlightenment. I've written about this and much more in the Creation Answer Book. You can find it on the web at equip.org. Look forward to seeing you next time with more of eTruth.